What do you do with all those leftover plastic bags that you have from the grocery store? I know at my house, we have um, a bag that we keep them in in the closet, but it ends up overflowing and taking over the whole closet, and I just end up throwing them away. Well, don't do that. I have a plan for you that you can use your bags and recycle them, as well as helping out some other people. And Mark Riesinger is here from Grace United Methodist Church in Mechanicsburg, where they do a project called Sleeping Matters. Thanks for coming, Mark. Thank you. <clears throat> How did you ever come up with a project to make out of plastic bags? One of our church members actually read about it in the Interpreter magazine. It was a youth group at a United Methodist Church in Arkansas was doing this. And so she read about it and she came to me and asked if we could do that. And I said, sure, let's give it a try. So she started crocheting and we had our mats. How long does it take to make one of these mats? It depends on how long the, each person is able to put into it, but it takes several months to make it all together. Wow. And how many bags comprise one mat? There are about 500 plastic bags in each mat. Okay. And is there um, a plea out for people to bring bags to your church? Do you advertise this places? Yes, <laughs> we would love to receive more plastic bags. Uh, we've been inundated with them. Our congregation is pretty good about bringing them in every Sunday, but our plurners are very good as well. And so we would love to receive plastic bags. Now, what is a plurner? A plurner is kind of like a, someone who works with yarn, except we call it plurn, which stands for plastic yarn. Okay. And so those are our professionals who crochet these mats together. We call them our plurners. Okay. How does that process work? What is the process of making the bag? Well, you take the plastic bag first, you flatten it out, and then you cut off the handles and the bottom of the bag, and then you cut it into four plastic strips. And then they tie them together and form them into a ball of plarn, kind of like a ball of yarn. And then they take that ball of plarn and they crochet it together into the mat. Wow. So have you learned to crochet through this process? I have not yet. I'm still back at the flattening of the bag <laughs> section. That's as far as I've gotten with it. Okay. <laughs> so it is something that all ages can do, though, because there's um, stations for each mm -hmm. part of the process. Yeah, we've got uh, some of our older members who have been crocheting their entire lives. They have learned how to crochet these. And then we've got kids that come in as well each week and just flatten the bags or cut them up. So it's been great for all ages. The first stage that we have is our sorting area. Thousands of unwanted grocery and shopping bags not going to landfills. Table over here is pressing them out, um, straightening them out. A potential trash heap becoming help for the homeless. An average size um, grocery bag will be cut into four strips. Each station on this assembly line with its own purpose. They're going to take the strips, the loops, and she's going to tie them together so that she can make some plarn. When we have a big pile of them, we roll them up into a ball of our, like yarn, but we call it plarn because it's plastic yarn. The final step of this process might look familiar, but there's a material difference. There's a lot of knots in it where wool won't have a lot of knots because we tie the, the plarn together to create the, the, um, the, strand, the string for us. But other than that, it's just like crocheting. Now, where do you send the mats once they're completed? The first batch that we did, we had about a dozen completed, and we took them over to Bethesda Mission in Harrisburg. And they have a van that goes around Friday and Saturday nights um, giving hot chocolate and blankets to those that are sleeping on the street. And they took the mats and distributed all of them, said they were very well received. What do the mats protect the homeless people from? How do they help them? Well, it's just a layer um, of protection in between the person and the pavement. Uh, it's not real thick, it's not real heavy, but it provides some kind of protection from, le from sleeping on the street. Well, it really is a wonderful ministry. Um, whenever we prayed before this segment, you had said that you always pray um, and bless the mats and hope that they can feel God's love around them as they feel the mat beneath them. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I just think that it's a wonderful ministry that um, other churches can hopefully pick up as well. Absolutely. We always have a blessing of the mat service before we take them to Bethesda. We distributed them and placed them over the front of our sanctuary and we received communion that day and as the congregation members came forward and received they uh, either touched the mats and prayed on them or some of them actually kneeled on the mats and prayed for the mats and for those who would be receiving them. That exactly like you said that they would feel not just the mat underneath them but God's love around them. Well, what a wonderful ministry and a way that people can recycle and mm -hmm. also help other people. Absolutely. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for having me. And I hope that you have enjoyed our new format of Susquehanna Express. Be sure to check our blog at susquehannaexpress.blogspot.com.